Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a short tutorial and show you how to draw some cartoon faces. So enjoy the process. Okay, so I'm working on the XP Pen 22. Artist 22 HD um, Generation 2. So, this particular device is wonderful um, in so many different ways. Not only is it a budget price pointed uh, device, it also has HD, 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, and it's just a wonderful device to pair with uh, an all in one or a desktop machine. And it doesn't have a huge footprint. Um, it is lacking the quick keys on the side, but I make up for that with this particular device. This is the quick key remote that I've got paired with my uh, all-in-one. And it's paired via a dongle. So you just slip this into the side USB port, and then you pre-program uh, all of your quick keys for your device. And it works so freaking well. It's one of those devices that you know, I, I feel like I couldn't do without. So, here we go. Just go ahead and add a layer. We're in Photoshop today. I utilize Photoshop just because it's one of those programs. It is kind of an industry standard. And it's got a great brush engine. Um, and, uh, you know, I really, really enjoy using it. You know, I've seen some devices that are just gigantic. And uh, this particular device doesn't really have that. You know, it's manageable and it's portable if needed, especially if you're pairing it with that all-in-one, such as a Surface device, a Lenovo, a Dell, um, not a Dell, but Dell. <laughs> and, you know, any of the, like I said, any of the uh, current devices that are out there um, uh, in your, in your, you know, in your marketplace. It also can pair with a Samsung phone, and I don't have a Samsung phone. I utilize Apple products, but Samsung is a great device, and I'm sure that if it paired uh, using that USB-C, and you can play games on it, and you can do a lot of other things. I don't know why you would play games on a device like this, but, you know, that's, that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my shtick. So, cartoon faces. Oh my gosh. I love cartoon faces. So, let's go ahead we're going to do a really quick search, and we're going to look up uh, C-A-R-T-O-O-N faces. Okay. Wow, look at all the cartoon faces that come up. Cartoons are so fun. You know, characters and cartoons and how we look at things um, and, and define them as a cartoon. A lot of times a cartoon is sort of like a caricature, uh, a, a very simplified version. Here's a really good example. <clears throat> simplified version of, and they're different, you know, artists. <laughs> so you, you kind of classify cartoons as being, you know, big eyed or really simplified versions of a human face or an animal or an object or something along those lines. So I've, I also collect um, action figures and toys and I've got a lot of those around my office, but for this, for this particular, let's go back here. Okay, so, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn tilt on. This, pre this particular device does support tilt, which is really cool. I don't know what the degrees are, so we're gonna do pen pressure, pen pressure. Oh, sorry, we're gonna do tilt. And it's got this little uh, arrow here, but if you watch, the second I put it down, it disappears because it senses the uh, pen. The uh, XP pen pens are batteryless, which is really awesome. So you don't have to worry about putting a battery in them. And you can, you know, draw to your heart's content. So with cartoons, um, a lot of times it depends on what type of character that you're going to uh, design. So we're going to design sort of a... Right now, sort of a sinister villain type. So, uh, with that being said, a lot of times, you know, you have to think of what's called shape language. Shape language is that language that we utilize as human beings to define certain things in our environment. So, circles, uh, a lot of times, are friendly because you don't have any sharp edges. You have triangles, which are warning, you know, danger. It has a sharp edge. 
um, squares, which are very secure and a lot of times denote a, uh, a sense of solidity, a, a sense of balance. And then you have really organic shapes like water. But today we're going to do a side view and then we're going to do a front view. We're going to have, we're going to just have some fun, right? So <clears throat> this particular, um, this particular, uh, character is going to have, um, sort of a, a sinister feel to it. So sinister. So I've got, again, look, so I've got that triangle here and I've got sharp edges. So what's happening is already you can kind of get a feeling that this is not going to be a friendly going to go and hug character. <clears throat> um, you know, depending on what you're doing, depending on what your vision is for the character. So let's go ahead and have again, got that ear to come around kind of tapers and then that jawline. So you see how I'm not getting into the details really quick. And that's because I want to kind of work out and, and feel exactly what this character is doing. And I can do that very quickly. And, um, using simple shapes. And two, with, with characters that are kind of sinister, they're not going to have these big, you know, wonderful, <laughs> you know, dreamy looking eyes. They're going to be smaller, right? So we're going to have the eyes kind of small. And I keep zooming back out because, again, I want to think about silhouette. I want to think about how it's going to read from a distance. And since I'm doing profile, let's go ahead and have this down. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of pupil in there, a little bit of iris. <clears throat> okay. Nice. So you see very quickly I can start creating a dynamic uh, character design, dynamic cartoon caricature, um, you know, in this digital environment. So we're going to have that chin come down a little bit lower. And now I'm going to think, okay, what is the, the next? I'm going to have that lip come here. Here. I'm going to have a weak chin. I have that sharp. Maybe I'll have a little goatee on there. Okay. So in very short order using, you know, the digital device, you can create a really dynamic piece of art. Let's go ahead and make him a little bit sinister. He's not really sinister enough, is he? He's not feeling sinister to me. He's kind of feeling sad, to be honest with you. Not really feeling very sinister. Okay, so let's do this. That changed the dynamic a little bit, didn't it? Okay, let's go ahead and change his eye a little bit. Okay. I like drawing a lot of times just a very slight indication of the entire eyeball. 
Obviously, this would not be included in a final, but it helps me to determine where other things are happening in the piece of artwork. Okay, so I need to go ahead and get rid of this. I do like the design of the mouth. So we're going to change from sinister to kind of a, a quasi-friendly. So maybe he's a... Maybe he's a vampire that is friendly. Yeah, kind of like a friendly vampire. Got these wear marks because he's old! Bunched up a little bit here. Okay, vampires don't have goatees or anything like that. There we go. Got some wrinkles on the bottom. Maybe he's an elf. You know, it is up to you on the story, um, you know, what you're telling, what you're trying to tell, what you're determining is going to be the best direction for your character cart slash cartoon, you know. Okay, so now we're going to turn, right now I've got taper on. Taper off. Okay, so let's increase. It still has a little bit of taper. Size jitter off. Ooh. Pin pressure. Okay, do this. No, we want to keep that on. Here we go. Okay, two, I said this in a couple of other videos. Right now, I'm getting a little bit of lag. So I'm going to go to image, um, image size. So right now I'm at 22 inches wide, which is pretty much the size because I believe it's 21.5 diagonally. So we're going to go ahead and switch that down to about 15. Okay, cancel. So we're going to do that again. Image, image size. And we're going to do, we're going to make sure that these are locked. So anytime I change the top number, the bottom number will change. So we're going to probably do 15. And it changes. Whoops. Yeah, that happens a lot. So we're going to do 15 by 8. Okay, so now it's going gonna, it's gonna to change. So now I don't have hardly any lag. Of course, that is a huge brush. So we'll go, there we go. Okay. So we're going to put some shading in here. Give it a little bit of form. There we go. I don't know why it's doing that. Pin tilt, shake dynamics. Let's go back. Okay, pastel B. Okay, there we go. So now that's what I was looking for. Such a fun. Okay. And just a little bit of shading here and there will really help sell what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Tapers on. So now I've got to have the collar come way up. Okay, that's good. 
We're gonna go ahead and transform him really quick because we want to do a few of these today. Yeah, he's not he's not overly like scary. File save as, and we're just gonna label this as face fun. How about that? Face fun. Whoops. Okay, face fun. Good, good. Face warm ups. Yes, yeah. You guys can tell that I do this a lot. Okay. All righty. So that's number one, and the ear is not quite done. So let's go ahead and define the ear a little bit more. The human characteristics of this undead creature. This guy just goes here. Somebody does it. Uh, maybe it has that lobe come down a little bit further. Yeah. See, now that I have it on a layer, so I like to, uh, and, and two, layer management is important for me. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. And I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get kind of a grayish, kind of a bluish gray hue. And I'm going to turn that pressure sensitivity off. Okay. And you're like, blue? Why is he blue? Because he's, he's a vampire. He's like a creature of the nights. So now... I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here in a second because I'm gonna give him a little bit of flesh tone, a little bit of flesh tone, but it's gonna be in the purple range, purple reddish range. So let's go down here, right about there, and I'm going to lock the transparency. That's that little flag right there, and I'm still on the same layer, and I'm gonna turn pressure on. So now, whoops, we're gonna make it big. Very quickly, you start creating something that has a little bit of character to it. Good. Okay. I'll wrap his eyeballs. We don't want to make him too sinister. Turn that off. And I'm going to maybe a little bit of the gray, the white of his eyes, maybe a little bit yellow, a little bit greenish, yeah, a little bit greenish. Okay. Blue. Yeah, maybe he's got a little bit of a brown eye. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just playing around right now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so then we're going to make his hair kind of dark gray. There we go. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, so well and dandy, very good. Okay, nice, 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 whatever. How did you get here? Well, first of all, I started out with the simple shapes, and I just build. It's like you're building, you know, you're building a creature, you're building something. Let's get to a little bit of eye shine. It's the little things sometimes that you build upon that help you. Well, that's a little bit too much eye shine. This isn't summer. Whoops. Okay. bit of eyelashes. There you go. It's your building. You know, you're building the simple shapes. You're building um, the character from the ground up. Now, there are certain... I, it's not rules. I never want to put, quote unquote, unquote, a rule in place that you have to follow. It's like, no, you have to follow this rule all the times. No, you don't follow the rule all the time. 
that's what's great about drawing. That's what's great about, you know, creating and illustrating and doing things like this is you make the rules, dude. If you want, you know, if you want to have a giant horn coming out of his head, you can do that. If you want, you know, his nose to be super long, you can do that. You can do whatever. If you want him to have a goatee, if you want him to have a beard, you know, you can do whatever you want in the context of the character design you're trying to establish. So we're going to go ahead and flatten, whoops. We're going to go ahead and flatten the layers. So now he's on one layer. And if you're like, okay, so I take away the background, look at all the holes there. So you can, you know, copy and you can paste another one on top of him if you want. And that might help you, which I just did. Or you can add a layer and then you can have a dark gray and you can start just filling in some of those areas. Whoops. Okay. And then let's go ahead and flatten that down. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a cooler highlight. So we're gonna go in the blue range over here and we're gonna switch this to overlay. And now I can put in some simple highlights. I'm gonna jack the flow back just a little bit. We're gonna go down to about 35% and the opacity. And we're gonna turn that taper off. Whoops, we're gonna go a little bit more than 55 in the, the opacity. Okay, so now Again, just a little bit of highlight here and there to kind of push and pull. I'm pulling the highlights and I'm pushing back the shadows. Whoops. And go ahead. And then if I want to have maybe a warm secondary light coming from the side, I can have that coming in. Maybe it's on the bottom. And that affects some of the areas over here. Right there. Maybe it's also coming down from the back. So, there we go. Very quickly, you can put down an image that speaks. It speaks to you. Not literally. I mean, that would be a little weird. So, let's go ahead and add a layer. Because I don't want to draw on the same layer as that. And just to have it for reference, so hopefully they can live in the same world. Maybe he has a muse, a minion, you know? Let's go back to black. Let's jack this, all these settings back up. Taper on, we're gonna get flow on. And we're gonna go ahead and test. Okay, so now we're good. Um, okay, so next, so we've done sort of a traditional kind of a cartoony face, right? Now, obviously this is rough. Going back, simplifying, finding the right line is always good. But as, as kind of in my brain, the way that I draw, I'm kind of like a visual sculptor. I want to be able to sculpt images, push and pull. I want to feel what I'm doing. So now let's say we have sort of a, a square head. Make sure that we're on the right layer. Good. Make sure that I got plenty of space to use him as a visual reference. <clears throat> Okay. Now, I've had a lot of people ask, they're like, well, how do you come up with images? How do you, how do you, you know, do things? It's just literally, it's, it's establishing a shape for the idea that I'm trying to get across. Then I build, you know, I always say, and I have said in the past, you know, doing animals is great. Animals really gives you a basis and a foundation to really establish uh, that next a little bit too thick, really establish because there's a lot of establish your um, your anatomy criteria because a lot of the anatomy on animals is ex it's the same thing, guys. You have the two eyes. I mean, this is this is across the board with fish, with amphibians, with lizards, with mammals. With I mean, the design language, the design language of what you're doing. You know, unless unless you're creating something completely obtuse, such as a, you know, maybe an octopus. Again, octopus, I believe, have two eyes. 
You know, whenever you get in, you know, a lot of them have the, the same symmetrical design. So you're going to be doing things that are similar. You know, whenever you do humans, you have that underlying skeleton, which again, if you look at a fish, it has a head, it has a spine, it has ribs, it has arms, <laughs> you know, the fins. And, and, and if you think of it that way, you can create so many different quote unquote creatures that have the ability to live in the same world, you know? That's what's really cool about designing stuff um, and, and creating stuff that live, quote unquote, in the same world. Now, if you start getting into creatures and aliens and that whole world, then you have the ability to change things up and you don't want to be limited. You know, maybe you could have a creature that has, you know, one eye up here, you know, and that's really cool. And then maybe you have an eye over here, or maybe an eye's right here. So then you can start getting into those design cues that that are outside of that earth box. So let's go ahead and it's going to be the, sort of like a Frankenstein's. You know, maybe that head is all the way up here. So let's go ahead and transform him. How I'm doing that is I'm hitting Control T. Okay, Control T. So let's, again, we're going to have this come down. He's like, huh? Okay, so, okay, Frankenstein. I have to remember Frankenstein and what he is. Frankenstein is a pieced together creature. He is pieced together. And, you know, certain design cues that we visualize as being Frankenstein, we kind of have to remember. Now, a while back, I watched a movie. I think it was the one with Robert De Niro. And even that one had the design cues that um, were indicative of Frankenstein. You know, he was pieced together. His head was, you know, the top of the skull cap was kind of misaligned. Maybe you had an ear. Maybe this ear is smaller. Maybe this ear is smaller because it was sewn on. This ear is really big, right? And, you know, you kind of have to think about that. What, what, in terms of a cartoon, what am I trying to accomplish? You know, maybe this, he's got a flat head. And since he is pieced together, he's not so organic. Maybe he's he's square in shape. And Frankenstein, if I believe the original monster was based on kind of a big hulking monster, uh, human, uh, and pieced together with large human parts because you wanted to be able to uh, put together some of the synaptic, uh, uh, you know, synaptic pathways. And if it was a really small human or a baby or a small child, you really couldn't do that because again, everything is miniaturized. So. Let's go, and, and you've got that big frontal lobe that comes down, right? So I want this to be up, and I want it to be down, like that. Here, and this goes up, like this. Because again, he's got, he's raising his eyebrow, and then he's got this cut that goes here, because this is not the original skull cap that is on him. So again, I'm putting in simple little visual cues and zooming in and out to make sure I got that silhouette correct. <clears throat> okay, so let's, again, I want to have this come out. Have this come out. Still adhering to that sort of, whoops. Oh, how did that happen? Oh, I switched. I'm sorry. That happens. Okay, so now we're going to come down. I'm going to have this. Here, here. He's got kind of a crooked nose. Because again, his nose is, it's pieced together from other, you know, from other, um, from other zones. So maybe it's like here, it goes like here. You've got that cut right there. <clears throat> Okay, so if you look at the original creature of Frankenstein, he's got these huge, bushy-like eyebrows that come around. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... He's got that... It goes here... Cartoons, cartoon faces. OK, 
Can't have that go too high. The corners of the mouth. There's a lot of ways you know, to create, there we go. He's got the larger eyes, because again, cartoon. And these sunken in, he's got these cheekbones that kind of come out. <clears throat> that cheekbone's kind of kind of come out just a little bit further, because I'm gonna have him smiling. And this one over here, you're just going to barely see that corner of the mouth. Okay, so you heard me twice. I got to check my size of my pupil here. Okay. Kind of hidden. Okay, so I'm gonna get to what I just said here in two seconds. Okay, so what is happening right now? <clears throat> you heard me say corner of the mouth. Okay, so typically on a human being, the corner of the mouth is in line with the center of the pupil. The nose, the corner of the nose is in line with the inside corner of the eye. And these are visual cues and little memory things in your brain, whatever you create faces that you can um, draw upon uh, no pun. Actually, yes, pun intended all day, baby. Yes, that you can draw upon to create lifelike, um, humanistic uh, creatures. So let's do this ear. And again, this, this ear is up a little bit too high. And I do that on purpose because typically the top of the ear is in line with the corner of the eye. And then I'm going to have this one down because, again, he's pieced together and things just really aren't right with him. And it's a smaller ear. Okay. Let's go ahead and color these in. Shades, excuse me. He's got a big scar right over his nose. Like right there. And then the Little trick whenever you do mouths, don't, it's the less you draw a lot of times, especially when they're closed, that's going to sell it better. So don't sit there and draw every little aspect of it. If you do, you know, a little, it's, it's open just a little bit right here. It kind of goes over the bottom lip right here. And then right here is where you're going to want to have darker lines. See, that sells it better, especially from a distance. And then we're going to have a square chin but since i've got this going up this way actually let's do some eye shine really quick let's do a little bit of the eye shines the light is coming from the left hand side good that makes me feel better it helps me again feel the life of the character and start designing um, things that help so again we're going to have that hair come out I'm not drawing every aspect of that scar, just what I want to see as I concept him. Now this, okay, so I've made a little bit of a boo-boo. This cheek is coming up, so I need to go ahead and erase this just slightly. Just a small adjustment. Okay, so this comes up. And this one's going to be more down. Because again, this muscle pulls up and it squinches and squashes that area to the left-hand side. And his nose is kind of bunched up. He's got that mouth come up and then he's got that other eyebrow. So you have this come up here and this come down and this come up. Okay, so now we're going to have a square. Again, since this area is coming up, I'm going to tilt that bottom chin, part of the chin. Here. OK. 
Okay, so let's move him down slightly. Whoops. What happened to my eye shines? That's what happens when you put everything on a separate layer there, Dr. Jones. Okay. I think the neck is a little bit too thin, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this out slightly. Kind of have this come here. Yes, that matches a little bit better. And we've got these areas right here that we're all familiar with, these electrodes that he was used to create life. I'm not going to make them hexagonal. I'm just going to keep it simple. Keeping it simple, right? Keeping it easy, simple. You can do whatever you want. This is your drawing. This is not my drawing. Well, you're... You know what I'm saying. It's your drawing. You do whatever you want. Okay. So then he's got the... Whatever this is. Let's go ahead and hit the eraser. Eraser! You see that blinking? That blinking, believe it or not, is a flaw in the Windows 10 and Photoshop relationship. That blinking happened on all my previous all-in-ones. Even the really powerful ones. <laughs> so just know that that blinking, if it's happening to you, is indeed a, a flaw in Photoshop. Where are we at here? Let's go back. Okay, it's doing... Okay, there we go. Occasionally, I'll accidentally hit the wrong quick key button on here whenever I'm doing all of my business, my drawing and whatnot. And I end up completely screwing everything up. That happens. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, I'm gonna hit the bottom button. Boom, goes back to the drawing. Okay, so bottom lip. He's like, who the scratch are you, Mr. Mr. Breaches? Okay, so here we can have, he's got the totally screwed up nose got a messed up nose. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to shade in just a little bit. Just a little bit. Good. So I want this to come around. And I'm going to have a little bit of hair coming out here. Okay, I'm going to shade this pupil in a little bit darker. Okay, good. Okay, so now I'm going to do the eyebrows. Little trick with eyebrows, don't sit there and do this. That That is not, you know, I always say less is more. Go ahead and do this, especially with hair. The less is going to treat you better than the more. Okay. Find these a little bit better. Enough with the blinking. Okay. Having fun. Go back to the eraser. Let's erase a little bit here, we'll erase a little bit there. Gives him a little bit more of a gaunt look. Gaunt being kind of emaciated without food. Maybe he's, you know, kind of dead. And maybe this eye is a little bit bigger. Actually, that eye is probably too big. But I'm going to leave it. Because he is, I mean, again, it's my drawing. I do whatever I want, Mom. Do whatever I want, Mom. Ugh. Okay. 
Maybe he's like a teenager. He's got some whiskers from the previous cadaver. Okay, so right now, now I'm gonna go ahead in, I'm going to create a layer underneath, and I'm going to turn taper off. So now I have a nice flat stroke. Whoops. It's a little bit too harsh. A little bit too harsh. Okay, so now I'm just gonna give a little bit of education. Shadowing and shading. Good, good. Got that upper lid that was sewn on. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, my uh, texture and skin brushes really quick and I'm gonna show you how quickly you can lay down some amazing like skin effects. Keeping things in mind about the human characteristics of the face, right? So, you know, if I measure here to here, even though he's got a flat head, it still works. Okay, here. Having tons of fun. Turn taper back on. It's a little crooked, but that's good. No, I actually don't like that. Let's get rid of that. You know, with my quick key remote, I can do so much. Let's do this. Let's give him a little, like a, like a jagged scar. Okay, let's jack that back up. Jack a scar right there. Yes, that works. Let's work a little bit more on this scar right here. Pressure sensitivity, the tablet comes in really handy whenever you're doing stuff like this. Nice. Okay, so now he's looking pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna do a little bit more shadowing on the bottoms. Just so you know, I've got a huge amount of work today. <laughs> huge amount of work. I'm like, ah, but you know, I, I just had it in me this morning. I'm like, you know what? I gotta do this. It's, I gotta do this video. It's in there, it's in my brain. I have to do it. If I don't do it, it's gonna slip away into the ether. It will slip away all the way into the ethers and I'll never see it again. And I'm like, okay, so that's why I'm doing this video for you guys these mornings. Okay, he's not too bad. Okay, so now let's go ahead and control E. Now he's on one layer, yay. Okay, what am I gonna do next? First of all, PCs are notorious for doing weird things. I have had it to where I've been working on an image and boom, it's gone. I actually lost an image uh, on my HP and it made me so sad. My HP ZBook, which by the way, the best device all in one I have ever owned. Bar none, HP ZBook X3 G4. I sold it because I didn't use it a lot. And you know, the longer you own a computer, guys, if you use it, great. But I wasn't using it. I wasn't using it enough. So we're going to go more green for this guy. More green. Yes. And I thought it was okay for me to go ahead and get rid of it. And I did. Oh, and I regretted it. I regretted it the week after I got rid of it. I'm like, oh, no. So then I started looking to buy another one. Because I had the seventh generation i7. It had 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of storage um, and a four gig video card. But for some reason, that seventh generation i7, it just didn't, it didn't hold up. So then I started looking for the eighth generation and that's the one that it's, you know, is the bomb. But now they, you know, they're so expensive. That device was upwards of $4,000 for a brand new one. And I'm like, are you on dope? I can't, I can't afford $4,000. You know, I was able to get it pretty much refurbished from HP for really inexpensive when I bought my seventh, you know, the seventh generation i7. But man, it just, oh, I really regret getting rid of it. <laughs> I really do. Uh, you know, it's just one of those devices where you're like, man, I wish I hadn't gotten rid of that one. Um, but, you know, a device is a device. It, it is, 
one of those things that, you know, it is going on, I think, four years old now, three or four years old, and, you know, you start having issues. But in terms of a workstation, if you guys are looking for a machine, the HP ZBook X2 G4 with the 8th generation i7 processors is one of the most powerful machines I've ever utilized. It is just amazing. Um, also, you know, you can get it with 32 gigs of RAM. I think it's DDR5. And it comes with a 4K screen, and it comes with peripherals, and you and two USB-Cs. It's just the one thing after the other. If you can find them, you know, because they're really, you know, great machines. Um, but going back to cartooning, so I've established two creatures. Really simple, basic shapes. Square, kind of a simplified triangle, and then we've gone on triangles. You can see that even though he's got some sinister to him, he's not completely evil. So let's go, what color eyes, what color eyes? <sighs> this happens to me so much. He's going to have some jaundice. Jaundice being, you know, your liver issue. So his, his the white of his eyes, aren't, they're not gonna be white. So they're kinda gonna be yellow. So you have to think of that. So his yellowish eyes, even some red, possibly red in there that I'm going, oops, I'm going to put in there here in a minute whenever I go and I go back and I start putting in some of the purple area. <clears throat> and then his eyes themselves, um, kind of again, that brownish yuck. Because <clears throat> his eyes, you know, being brought to life, they were previously dead. So let's go ahead and put a little bit more grayish light hue in there. He's not going to be like blue eyes and friendly. Okay, so now we're going to go to the purple. Purple, again, whenever somebody, you know, loses oxygen, whenever they die, that's why, you know, he's going to have all these purplish, bluish hues because it's his skin, you know, blood. He doesn't have blood flowing through his veins. He's quote unquote undead. Same thing with uh, this guy. Now he does have circulatory system, but the skin again is not going to have the same hue as a. Let's do this as a um, fit and you know normal human being. So let's go ahead. We're gonna put in some purple around his eyes because typically with. Um, with humans, this is where I would be putting in that red because that's the skin's going to be thinner around the eyes and you're going to have more blood flow. Okay, so we're going to have this and we're going to come here. And he's got these purplish lips. Maybe a little bit darker. Yeah, a little bit darker. Okay, so we're going to go to red, a little bit of pink, pink hue, reddish hue. So we're going to do the end of his nose and around his eyes a little bit more. Maybe some of his ears. And if you don't see how it went outside the, the lines there, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. And we're going to down, and now we're going to lock the transparency. So I locked the transparency on that layer, so anytime... I can literally not go outside the lines. And that's really helpful in doing this type. A little bit of red here. This type of illustration. Quick and dirty, quick and dirty. Maybe I got some swellings right here on this chin areas. Go ahead and make that a little bit darker and a little bit cooler. And you can sample and just put a little bit more color here and there. And that's what's really cool about, again, doing stuff like this. You can just have fun with it. You know, lots of blues in the skins, you know. Blue. 
Nice. Okay, so now there's the sketch. We're going to flatten that down. Still have layer transparency on. We're gonna turn that off. We're going to select. Whoops, I made the boo-boos. Let's go ahead and do a layer. I forgot to color in the shade these in. That's okay, we'll just do this. E, and then we'll add a layer and then we'll do multiply. Let me just put stuff in really quick. Okay. Having a little bit of fun this morning. <laughs> okay, E. All right, we'll put some highlights in the hair. Add, and then we're going to create what's called a clipping mask. So I added a layer, I clicked on the Alt key, and then I went on the little line in between the two layers. Here, we'll go ahead and do that again. So here's the layer, I clicked on the Alt key, and what that does is it acts as a layer transparency for whatever is underneath. So again, if I decide, oh, look, you know, it's I don't have any, any color outside of the artwork sketch, and what's really cool, I can now adjust the trans or the layer opacity of it, which is really fun. So there we go. So what I like to do is I like to put things on multiply, and then I'll create um, what's called a shadow layer, and I like using uh, a purple hue. It gives me a lot of control because I don't like using black. I never like using black for the shadows. Me and black are not friends. We used to be friends a long time ago. Of course, I'm wearing black today. So, see, you can really start pushing and pulling those forms very quickly. And since I'm not using black, it's not killing my color. I'll make that into a silhouette. See, I talked about having that speckle brush, so I, I like using skin. Where is it? Oh, no, we're not doing that. Oh, no, no, skin. Where's the skins? No, no, no. What did I do with the skin brushes? I wonder if that's on a separate computer. Dry media, wet media, dry media, chunky charcoal. No, we're not doing that. Special effects. Yeah, that's all right. So let's do this. So um, let's, we're going to choke back on the opacity on this and we're just going to put some little uh, skin anomalies here and there. Which is really cool. You know, maybe there's some fungus growing on him. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to push back the shadows just slightly and flatten that layer. We're going to create another layer. And now we're going to, okay, a little bit. We're gonna do overlay. Okay, now we're going to put in some highlights. So let's go back to our other brush that we were utilizing a minute ago with the texture, the Pastel C. I love this brush. We're at 28% opacity. Now you can see, again, I've got this locked um, on a uh, clipping mask, so we're on overlay. And you can see it's really brilliant and bright. So now I've got green, green. So I'm gonna go over the green areas. I've got taper off. Okay, a little bit of highlights here and there, just going out, good. So now I'm gonna select that layer. It's important that you, that you utilize the color spectrum of the color you're trying to lighten. You know, if I go in and I start doing this, it creates some really great warm tones, you know, and some warm value. 
And, and that works in some contexts, but a lot of times you need to be careful of what you're doing. Because you don't you don't want to have a weird color story happening, so that's good. So I lighten those up a little bit. Okay. So still keeping it cool. I'm gonna go over to red, orange-ish, because I want to have some areas that have a little bit of pop to them, like right around here. The nose, the mouth. Okay, that's good. Top of the ears. Again, we've got that little bit of stuff right there, a little bit warmer right there, and that lip. Okay. Having some fun, that's what it's all about, right? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and merge that down. And now, so I've got this on one layer. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it underneath, and I'm gonna change the opacity on the top one. So now, I've just got a couple areas if I would decide to remove the background, but I'm not going to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to what's called the Dodge and Burn. Maybe. There we go. So Dodge and Burn. So Dodge basically is to lighten. Dodge is to darken. See how that darkens? And you can adjust the exposure. You can do the tonal range if you're going to do shadows, midtones, or highlights. I typically do uh, midtones. And what that does is you're darkening what's underneath. I still have to do the hair highlights. Blasted. Okay, so now I'm going to do. Come on, stop. I'm going to do dodge. Dodge is to lighten. Okay, so we're going to do up here. Whoops. Highlights. Dodge. Dodge. Highlights. Oh, duh. It's on eraser. <laughs> okay, so let's go up here. Just make those highlights pop just a little bit more. It's just like in photography, you know, back in the old days, whenever they had the um, the emulsion paper, uh, burn is to expose, and you would burn and make darker the image, and to dodge is basically you have a, a little, little puck, and the light would come down, and you would basically shield underneath, and that would actually, you could phase things out and dodge uh, and burn, so that's a photography term. We are in Photoshop, after all. We'll select this. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit lighter, and we're going to go uh, overlay and make it a clipping mask. So now we're just going to put a little bit of highlights here and there. Okay, just a few little highlights here and there in the hair. Okay, and flatten that down. We're going to create a little bit of a background to um, boost contrast from the background. A little bit darker. Cartoon faces and heads. I could do this all day. I love creating stuff like this. So now, since he's a little bit more rendered, I can come back over to him and just really quick to push and pull some of those values. I'm going to hit burn. In very short order, I can really create more of a dynamic. He's got the white tooth or the blue tooth. I didn't do his tooth. It's called laziness. So we'll do this. little bit of reflected light on the bottom and then finally I'll put in a little bit of the white. 
a white tooth. So you can see it a little bit better. There we go. Eee. Just a couple of fun characters, having some fun, cartooning, doing character design. You know, this is, it's just so much fun. You know, then you can get into doing lighting effects. So if I wanted to start playing around with different types of lighting effects, I'll go ahead and do a clipping mask. I'll come over here to my, um, my big, my big shading brush. Where did that go? So general brushes, soft round. Soft round pressure opacity. I like that one. So as you see, let's go ahead and turn taper off. Now what I can do is I'll go to um, color dodge. So let's say he's in a room that he has uh, warm red light over here and cool blue light over here. So let's go ahead and do that. I get really large. Okay, so then we'll do blue, right? Just a little bit. Color dodge, there, dodge, color dodge. And I'll just push back the opacity slightly. Yes, suddenly he's having some fun with you. Why, hello, Dr. Frankenstein. <sighs> do you want salt on your eggs? <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Having some fun cartooning some characters, utilizing the software and hardware available to us. Um, you know, utilizing simple shapes to create dynamic characters. And you can do this, gosh, you can do this all day. You know, and as a final, what I would probably do is I would go to the white. You know, I would go to, let's say... Where's it at? Splatter line. Let's do this one. Okay, so I'd come here and I would go in and just, you know, to have a little bit of fun. You know, it'll make it pop a little bit more. Just having some fun drawing on this beautiful springtime morning, which happens to be 27 degrees outside here in the mountains. What is with that? It's April. Enough of the, of the winter, you know? And then I can push that back a little bit if I want to. Again, going back to him, save. That's what's great about working in the digital environment on devices like this, this, uh, this huge high definition tablet. I mean, you can create some fun images really quickly. All right, you guys, thanks. And please like, and subscribe and share. Definitely hit that notification bell. Um, new videos coming out each week. I'm trying to do two a week, maybe even three. We'll see. So the next one that I have on the docket for you guys, where's my phone? Um, I'm going to try and do uh, creating bodies and simplified cartoon bodies. So hopefully this will be part of the larger series of uh, drawing and experimenting with simple shapes and creating characters. So thank you guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye.